morning, everybody. Thanks for welcoming, welcoming us. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so I'm relying on you, you know, I, I, I got the sense, I went on the website to see, I thought, what? I've never been in this building even, you know, Anne-Marie has, and other YWAMers have, but I try to get a sense of who, who, who's here, you know, and I got the sense of you're, you're fun, uh, there's, there's life here, um, and so, you know, one of the things I love to do when I'm trying to preach or teach is I rely on illustrations a lot. So when I heard the children were doing a bit of drawing at the back, um, I didn't want anyone at all to miss out on that. And so for, for later, now this mustn't distract us from um, what I'm going to share and we're going to read here now, but it's very important. So what I need is, is volunteers to draw, and this could be the little ones, but they've probably got lots of work to do over there already, or anybody here at all, to draw a kind of map of this room, Okay. So cartographers, that's the word, isn't it? Um, does anyone want to hand anything out? I think there's some crayons if you prefer those. Yeah. So not too much detail. So imagine you're up there looking down. I don't want that sort of detail, you know, the patches on the head and stuff like that, but just a kind of broad sort of thing. We're going to come back to that. Yeah. So set that up. So in the, in the story of Lazarus, when I've been reading it uh, recently, um, there's, there's a bit kind of right at the start that he's like a bungee to me. He keeps pulling me back to it, you know. For years, the, the obvious incredible power of the resurrection of the dear loved friend of Jesus, Lazarus, is that's where my attention has always been. And of late, I've, and we're going to read the whole passage, so um, we'll get into that. And I'll set some scene for what's going on here. And just, I'm just so excited. I'm just jumping about a bit. But um, <laughs> let's read it together. So this is uh, John 11. Right, okay. Now, a man was sick, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who'd anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair. And it was her brother, Lazarus, who was sick. So the sister sent a message to him. Lord, the one you love is sick. When Jesus heard it, he said, This sickness will not end in death, but is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after that, he said to the disciples, Let's go to Judea again. Rabbi, the disciples told him, just now the Jews tried to stone you, and you're going there again? Jesus said, aren't there 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of this world. If anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm on my way to wake him up. Then the disciples said to him, Lord, if he's fallen asleep, he'll get well. Jesus, however, was speaking about his death, but they thought he was speaking about natural sleep. So Jesus then told them plainly, Lazarus has died. I'm glad for you that I wasn't there so that you may believe, but let's go to him. Then Thomas, called twin, said to his fellow disciples, let's go so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. Many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. As soon as Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed seated in the house. Then Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Yet even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha said, I, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die ever. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she told him. I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God who comes into the world. Having said this, 
she went back and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling for you. As soon as she heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw that Mary got up quickly and went out. So they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to cry there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and told him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother wouldn't have died. When Jesus saw her crying and the Jews who had come with her crying, he was angry in his spirit and deeply moved. Where have you put him? He asked. Lord, they told him, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, couldn't he who have opened the blind man's eyes also have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, angry in himself, came again to the tomb. It, it was a cave, came to the tomb. And a stone was lying against it. Remove the stone, Jesus said. Martha, the dead man's sister, told him, Lord, he's already decaying. It's been four days. You stink. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you heard me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd standing here, I said this, they may believe you sent me. After he said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out bound hand and foot with linen strips and with his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Praise God. Wow. Ugh. So much in there. And then all just building up to this, this, this end of it where Lazarus, this miraculous man, man, man of miracle, was raised from the dead. So I just want to say a few things about the background of this story, just leading up to this and explain a few things that I know I found useful. Um, it's kind of... Most people think it's probably late November just because of the pat what's going on in the passages beforehand. And the most thing that I, the thing I love just before it says Jesus eluded their grasp. Now he'd been in Jerusalem teaching and speaking, and they were ready to stone him. They were about to stone him. He slipped away, he eluded them, and he went to Bethany. Now, this confused me for years, this, but there's two Bethanies. I don't know how I missed it before. Um, but there's one what I'm going to call dangerous Bethany, right? Because it's like two miles from Jerusalem, so about like walking to Tesco Extra or something from here. Um, and the Jews there, probably around there even, you know, even though he had friends there, uh, had just heard what he'd said. You know, they'd accused him of blasphemy. And so that's what I'm calling dangerous Bethany. Um, now, safe Bethany is 20 miles from Jerusalem, east of the Jordan. It's like seven hours walk. It's a bit like walking to... Bridgend or Merthyr or Magor. I was looking this up on a map. It's about like six or seven hours to those places by foot. Um, so yeah, east of the Jordan. Now this is where John had been baptizing. Uh, so the people there knew John's teaching, a baptism of repentance. Um, they knew what John had said about Jesus as well, about him being the Messiah and John's predictions about him and what the sort of things he would do because he reminded them of all the prophecies in Isaiah uh, opening blinds by men's eyes, opening their ears, the lame walking. And even in, this, in the, the paragraph before this, they decided for themselves, so they decided that it was true, that Jesus is the Messiah. They believed in him in east of the Jordan, but he just escaped from Jerusalem because even though they'd seen the same things, the, the, the Jews in Jerusalem had seen the same things, the miracles, They'd heard that just, I think a man had just been born blind. And that was one of the miracles, one of the signs that John, the Apostle John, wrote about. Um, so they'd seen those signs, and they must have been aware of what John was saying. And of course, they'd read, they got the scriptures, but they still didn't connect Jesus. Look, it's here right in front of us now. This is the Messiah. Yet the people in the Jordan and other areas all around Israel had started realizing and believing that Jesus is the Messiah. So... That's the kind of context we're within. Um, we come to now, just, re, just to say something about uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. So Jesus has met them, 
Um, I'm just going to read here. Jesus, the disciples were traveling. This is in Luke 10. They came to Bethany and Martha welcomed them into her home. Sister Mary, brother Lazarus. So here's, we're just piecing together this family. And you remember that Martha um, was really busy. She was very task-oriented, focusing on what needed to be done as far as hospitality goes. Um, and, but Mary was just gripped by what Jesus had to say. He, she just had to be at his feet listening to what he was saying. Um, so that's that story there you, I'm sure you're aware of. So this is actually their first meeting. Uh, and now I just wanted to... How are the maps going, by the way? Have you got maps done? Anyone? Yeah, got a few maps. That's good. Good. Um, do you want to collect them in now? Yeah. <coughs> Because there's going to be something I need to add to, someone is going to add to the maps. Um, okay. So maybe, maybe make it a competition, decide who's the best, the best one. We only nearly need one map. So, good. So this is how I'm reading this, this passage here. There's this, Lazarus gets sick, they send a message to Jesus. They know Jesus is in east of the Jordan. <coughs> So seven hours walk, so it takes about a day of daylight to walk there. They get to Jesus, and it's like Jesus has got more information than the messenger. Do you know what I mean? So when the messengers leave, Lazarus is alive. And if you look at the days involved here, it's, it's likely that Lazarus actually died just probably shortly after the messengers set off. Um, but... Um, yeah, Jesus says, yeah, Jesus, that just staggers me. Jesus knows. And this is what we come into with a map, actually. Jesus knowing this, this sort of stuff. Now, I guess the disciples were pretty happy about in, being in safe Bethany uh, because of the recent attempts on Jesus' life and them being mixed up in that, especially when you notice that funny little, <laughs> in verse 16, when Thomas says, let's go so that we may die with him. I mean... I've never been in a situation like that um, where the stakes have been really, really high. Um, I, I, I don't know why it just, it's just, let's go. So we, it's very defeatist, isn't it? Yeah, there's, no, there's no faith in that, knowing what all Thomas had already seen. Um, but I'm not in any position to judge him. So, because I think that... I just want to mention my dad because he keeps coming up with a story. He's, he was in the Baptist Missionary Society for a few years in the Belgian Congo, so probably in his late 20s. And um, he, keeps, he always tells me this story about how um, he got some money, they went down river to where the Bible Society was to buy some Bibles because the village and distributed them in the schools, the hospitals, things like that, and to teach them the stories of the Bible and the accounts. And so he goes there, he buys them. This is all, he buys all the Bibles they have hands all the money over he has, and he's come down miles, you know, maybe a day's travel in a canoe down this five mile wide in places river. One side is the French Congo, I think, and one's Belgian. But anyway, buys the books, heads back up stream in the mid, just, I could just imagine in this dugout, they, there were dugout canoes with outboard <coughs> motors on them in the middle of this massive river, and then a military boat comes up to them. And they're expecting, the, you know, in a, in a, in a boat in the middle of the river, they're expecting sort of either guns due to, the, I guess, the environment they're, they're living in or food or that sort of stuff. So they're not expecting Bibles. They confiscate these Bibles um, because, uh, and this is, this is just the miracle for my dad to spread the gospel because the captain says, well, what are those? He's hoping for guns, you know, no guns. They're Bibles. Okay, they give them to me, no money, you know, just take them. I've got 5,000 troops in there with nothing to do. I want to teach them to read and to learn the Bible. So my dad didn't get to do any of that, but he was like the best evangelism ever, he thought. He was like amazed. You know, he must have been scared, though. Do you know what I mean? A military boat coming up into a dugout canoe. What's going to happen? But the outcome being the gospel reaching. I, mean, just, I just wonder what stories... There were after those lives of those soldiers, but uh, um, I'm glad I've never been in one of those life and death situations. But uh, incredible, um, blessing, blessing. So Jesus tells us why he's staying, and he's glad he wasn't there when um, 
he, gl he was gl he glad Lazarus died because there were the two reasons for the glory of God and the Son, and that the disciples may believe. So we're just highlighting those two things there because we come to the bit that's really getting my attention here. Um, Lazarus had been dead four days, we see. Died pretty much as soon as the message was sent. Um, so he arrives, and who's first to meet him is, is Martha. Now, somebody pointed this in, in a... I'm, I'm sure I heard this in a sermon somewhere, and I never mentioned, noticed it before. The two ways... The opening statements by Martha and Mary are both the same. If you'd been here, he would not have died. And Martha and Mary got very different reactions. Oh, Jesus reacts to them very differently. Um, I know Jesus is... There's, there's this thoughtful discourse with Mary and Jesus about um, the resurrection. And with Mary, there's this very emotional response. Very... And, it just, it's wonderful to me knowing that Jesus knows what kind of help and response you need. What language do you speak? I guess love language in a way as well. Um, and so leave it to that most powerful verse, you know, Jesus wept. Um, but what's getting my attention here is, is Martha's for the first time, really. If you'd been here, he would not have died. Which kind of, to me, is like the answer of a question, why didn't you come? Um, and then I thought, well, that's a question I've kind of thought myself. And has anyone else ever felt that, that God didn't turn up somewhere? Because obviously this family wanted God to turn up, wanted Jesus to turn up, um, but he didn't turn up. And then Martha's second statement, whatever you ask God for, God will give you. And... That just teaches us, doesn't it? And what can you ask God for? Um, and I thought, well, obviously you can ask God anything. But I know there's loads of times in my day that I just don't bring God into it, into the challenge I've got. You know, uh, if I can't fix something, I've had a, a few days this week, I've been trying to fix an engine, fix uh, hair clippers. And it's, we bought a new set in the end, as you can see. Um, <laughs> And it was like, oh, you know, but Anne-Marie always asks God into these situations. She's teaching me loads about that. Um, just how silly it seems, but no, you know, God is so bought and sold out about you. He loves you so much, you know. He, he knows the language he wants to speak to you in, whether it's an emotional one or a mental one. Um, but he, he's going to turn up. And then there's this wonderful one about um, with Martha that how she says Lazarus will rise again on the last day. And yeah, there's, there's a kind of resignation in my life sometimes about everything's going to pan out okay in the end, you know? Just survive this until heaven, you know? Um, and that doesn't quite settle right sometimes for me, but uh, not now. That you feel like the message is. And then Jesus' response to the kind of, you know, Martha saying, you know, not now, you know, I guess, it's all going to be right in the end. His response is saying who he is. I am the resurrection and the life. So Jesus carries within himself resurrection, life. He's the resurrection and the life. So, uh, you know, you, we know this, when, when he was, whenever he's, there's no death, there's no illness, wherever he is. I mean, time and again, in, in we read in the Gospels, um, he heals everyone. There doesn't seem to be anyone left out. And I know then you, you start thinking, okay, well, Jesus is doing that. Do we look at this, how to raise people from dead, how to make lame people walk? Is there a method here that we're missing that Jesus is in doing that? But he's intrinsically, he's, he's, he's innate, it's in his nature to be life, to be resurrection, wherever he goes. And so then that made me think, well, uh, are we reading this passage? Am I reading this to find out how, oh, wow, that's the ultimate miracle, isn't it? Raising someone from the dead. Or is it um, a discovery of what is inherent in you, how God made you? What is intrinsic in you? What purpose has he in you? So um, by very nature... You being in a place, just like Jesus, when he was in a place, there was no death. 
And if he'd been there, she wouldn't have died. Um, but now he's in this moment now. He's, he's going to walk according to his nature. He's going to turn up um, and be the resurrection and the life to Lazarus in this special situation. It made me think, what is it in me and you and you and everybody else that he's designed and purposed within us, so innate, so intrinsic about us, that we may not even know it yet. But yet, wherever we are, because of his Holy Spirit at work within us, there's going to be a miracle for somebody. Yeah? Whether they're caught up in, in anxiety, or if it is a sickness, or whether it is um, they're struggling with education, anything. I, I know God has built into each one of you, each one of us, something that by very nature of the fact that we turn up somewhere, there's going to be a miracle for somebody. Yeah? And knowing that, um, yeah, the, there's, there's powers at work that are going to stop, try to stop you going there and turning up and being in that place. There's going to be thoughts in your head to say, no, it's, you know, it's not, not for me. This. It's, I can't do this. No, but it's intrinsic. It's in you. God made and purposed you for, for many miracles of every description. So that's what I really, I just, if you pick nothing else up from the, today, it's to know that there is something in you <laughs> that just by you turning up is miracle to somebody else. And this is what's going on with, with Jesus, in, I believe. It's just incredible to me. Um, yeah, and just the power at work in Jesus and the, that same power that raised Christ from the dead um, is at work in us. He's willing and acting a purpose in your lives, in my life. Um, and he, he never tramples over our will. It's up, still up to us. Um, to walk in it. Um, and so the, we come to the illustration now um, because this is the, I guess, the bungee I talked about at the start in verse 9. Um, it says, aren't there 12 hours in a day? It seems to me just, every time I've read this, it's like seemed out of place, you know. If anyone walks during the day, he doesn't stumble because he sees the light of the world. If anyone walks during the night, he does stumble because the light is not in him. Okay, so that made me think of, um, well, I'd been reading that week, Psalm 43. There's many passages similar to this. Um, and it's talking about God sending his light and truth. So Jesus knew um, that he was the resurrection and the life. So he knew wherever he went that life came, wholeness came. Death was defeated wherever he was. Um, and he knew the right timing for all of these things, didn't he? Uh, that it shouldn't go just yet, he has to wait. So um, that's what I'm just now trying to figure out for myself. Um, when I get an idea, is it right to just jump into it enthusiastically? I'm quite enthusiastic when I get an idea in my head. I just want to get and do it then and there, you know? Um, but Jesus knew the timing. Isn't that amazing? So um, I would love to know that in my own life. And I think it's, it's going to be good to demonstrate this. So I'm going to need four. I see we've got maps here, haven't we now? That's the best map, is it? Good. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's good. I see that. I don't know whose wonderful map this is. So... Um, actually, actually, if, have you got another one? That's a good map, but I don't want to show you that one because <laughs> it's an important one. Yeah, yeah. So there's the stage here, platform, where you're all sitting. So in this psalm, it talks about sending your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. Then I will come to the altar of God, to God of my greatest joy. I will praise you with the lyre, 
oh God, my God. So that's talking to me about a, a journey. And this, this journey can be, I know for me, like a second long sometimes. I could be, uh, some, one of the clearest times is, is when I'm in, sometimes in worship. I, I come into, say, a church or a time together that we're, we're together as brothers and sisters, and I'm not feeling it. Um, and feel out of place, or like, I don't belong here, you know? And there's a second long journey to get to this altar. But sometimes it can be just 20 years, you know? There's all sorts of things going on in our lives at different levels and things like that. So um, we need God's light and truth sent to us for it all. So, so we're going to enact this out. I think that's the start over there, isn't it? In that patch over there. And the, the goal is down here, Yeah? So this is in the psalm, we talk about God's dwelling place. So this, remember, this journey can be a second long or 20 years. So um, can we have four or five, six volunteers? What's going to happen? Because I see you're doing exactly what I would do and not <laughs> put my hand up at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you can be light and truth. Yeah, we've got light and truth. So I need four volunteers, and light and truth are going to help them. All of them are going to start, because, because it's Lazarus. Um, <laughs> this is the start, and you've got to get from there to there, but you're going to be initially blinded. Yeah? Okay? So... There's not going to be any accidents. This is fully safe, yeah. We've gone, done all the risk assessments and things. Yeah. Yeah, so I just want to, yeah, anyone brave enough? You just have to pick some people. Yeah. Do you want to pick anyone, Annabelle? Or do you want you to be that person? The children can do it, yeah. Could they... You want to help? Yeah. And Tanya. Cool. Any ages. Just go and go. Yeah. So. So li light here is, you know, well darkness is obviously you having a, this wrapped around your head. Be kind of a bit like Lazarus because he was bound up, wasn't he? Yeah. Got to be able to breathe though. You can wrap it around. Just yeah, so that's good. You might might need some help. Good. You've got to be able to breathe though. Not the whole head, but yeah, we don't need it. So yeah, there's light and truth. Now the map is the truth. Okay, that's what we're using to demonstrate truth. And oh, that's not the right map because um, what. Maybe if I stand here, because I don't want them to see. That's kind of the normal map. You, you can see it, no problem at all. But this map here, you see, what, is, what they can't see is the, they've got to get around a lava pit. They've got to get past the thorns, is it? Uh, maybe a crocodile pit there. They've got to get from all the way there to there. Yeah, but they haven't got this map. Which is the truth, yeah? <laughs> Won't be long. I think we, we, we could probably start, can't we? Yeah, should we start? I think we should start, Jay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're gonna to try and see what it's like getting to the destination without any light and without any truth. And what's your name, sorry? James. James. Thank you, James. He's going to see how far he's going to go. I'm just plotting him on the map here. And Oh, dear. Oh, no. No. He landed in the lava pit. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you want to see what happened? Yeah. You started there. But invisible, I know you can't see it with your eyes. There's this, this, this thing here, this lava, lava pit. Don't tell the others, though. Yeah, okay. Right, good. So, who we got here, the next young man? 
What was your name? Oba. 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 Great. Thank you for joining us, Oba. So now, Oba's got no light. But truth, will you give him the truth? So hold this in your hand, this piece of paper. Good. Honestly, there's a piece of paper there. And help him forwards. See how far he gets. Oh, I think that's the lava pit again, isn't it? That's where you... Yeah, oh no. Let's take the, uh, band the bandage off. Yeah. See what happened. See what happened. You walked right into the lava pit. Oh dear. But you couldn't see it, could you? You couldn't see it. It's not your fault. No, it's not your fault. So, <coughs> let's clear the way. Let's clear the way now. Yeah. So, light. And we're going to send light to... Take the blindfold off. So you've got an advantage now. Look at this. She's got the light. Yeah, no problem. So you've just got to get to there, haven't you? Yeah, just to there, yeah. Yeah, just, just no tricks. Not really. Oh, dear. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so you just, yeah, because without this, you see, you watch into the, yeah, see? <laughs> goes for everybody else. Right, um, truth. So now there's the psalmist calls to send light and truth. So we're going to send both this time. She's gonna, she's, this, young, this lady's going to have light and she's going to have truth. Yes. Yeah, so you've got the, yes. Oh, further than anyone else, yes. Now, which way? <laughs> you've got, it's, we've, got, we've got no more pilgrims, so you've got to make it. Yeah, you got it, yeah. Woohoo! Yes. <laughs> Thank you, good. Thank you, everybody. Well done, everybody. Oh, good. So. I love that because, uh, you know, it shows that you need, you, you need both, don't you? I mean, there's lots of other passages where well, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I love the fact that sometimes uh, well, that Jesus comes alongside us in that trip as well. You know, not only does he just blaze our way forward with the light and give us the truth, be it the word of God or whatever, but what people are, our brothers and sisters' guidance and things like that. He speaks to our hearts directly as well, uh, but he comes with us on the way, you know? Uh, and so you, you saw a little bit of that when the people were actually blindfolded. We, need, we looked after them. You know, I love the fact that Jesus comes alongside us. Oh, um, yeah. Well, those, that's, that's the thing I want to convey this morning is the intrinsic value within you, the inherent, the nature within you that God created was perfect. And uh, in him... We've been purified by his resurrection and he sent his Holy Spirit. And um, wherever we go, we take that with us. Um, and so I think, I know I felt powerless in situations before. In situations just for my own life or in a situation where you got with friends, you need to give advice or at a family one or anyone else. Have you ever felt powerless? Yeah, um, I think it would be good if we gave some attention to that time now for the, the power of God, just as Jesus came. We call you, Lord Jesus, into this place to um, fill our hearts with your strength, fill our hearts with your joy. Reveal to us, Lord, what you plan and purpose that you have for us. Um, Shine your light on the gifts within us you've, you've given us. Um, reveal to us in your word the truth about us. We, we want to discern between the truth about myself. I want to discern the truth about myself and I want to discern the lies about me and get rid of the lies, Lord. Lies, Lord Jesus. So shine your light, speak to us in this moment, Lord. 
We want to, we, we see your power at work. We see how at ease you were with your nature, with who you were, the timing and walking into danger. We, we see that you were so at ease in that. And Lord, I, I want to be the same. I want to be like you, knowing what the Father's doing and just doing what he's doing, saying what he's saying, Lord with those that are hurting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah.